Hi, I'm Mike Cutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois, along with Jim Baltz and Structural Design Specialist, and we're going to discuss estimating drought stress corn yields. Our learning objectives include estimating yields for drought stress corn, and then secondly, explain the importance of taking a representative sample and then sampling sizes. Here's a picture just recently from the University of Illinois. The take-home message on top, that's a pretty good-looking ear. Silks are dark, a pretty good-looking cob. We open up that cob, and it's right next to it, and you can see we've got a problem. Uh, bad news is uh, that you can see very poor pollination. Uh, the good news was 18 rows around and 42 rows long. This cob had the potential of being a real buster of a, a yield producer. Let's look then at some estimates, relationships of bushels of grain contain in a ton of corn silage. This is normal corn silage, compliments from the University of Wisconsin, Dr. Joe Lauer. So you can see in terms of yield, uh, 25 bushel, you can see there's a silage 7 ton, and so the grain equivalent there you can see is about 33.5 bushels per ton of corn silage. And so you can come down and see that as we get more corn grain in, to the uh, corn uh, plant itself being produced, obviously our, uh, bu our bushel equivalent per ton of corn size really goes up. And many of us use that thumb rule of 8 to 1 or 7 to 1 in terms of pricing corn. Of course, that all changes with drought stress corn. So certainly estimating corn size yields uh, based on bushels, one approach you can see from this bulleted information, five bushels of grain per acre equates to about one ton of 30% dry matter corn silage. Unfortunately, we're going to have some of that acreages here in the Midwest. Now, for corn yields that are greater than 100 bushel, you can uh, estimate about one ton of corn silage for every seven or eight bushels. So again, if we know the amount of grain we have, we can back into some of these calculations, and we'll illustrate to you how you can do that. So if we got this corn, how are we going to estimate what we really have here in terms of bushels per acre? This is a fairly complicated appearing calculation, but modestly easy, actually. So you're going to calculate, or we're going to calculate, the length of a row to equal 1 1,000th one of an acre. And that is 43.5 square feet row spacing in feet. You go, what is that? Well, let's just show you what that's going to be. There is your 43.56 uh, square feet. If I've got 30-inch rows, let's make it even simpler to see. Let's call that 36-inch rows. That would be 3 feet. And, of course, it's uh, 12 inches uh, per foot. You can see that would be basically 3 uh, square feet. To get that number, divide that 3 square feet into 43. And you can see very closely that's where that number 17 comes from. So that becomes an important calculation based on, on your row, on your spacing of your corn in the field. Once you've got that number, you can estimate the number of years per acre uh, by counting the number of years in that 17.42 feet and multiplying by 1,000. So, for example, if I took this and uh, went to the field and used this example of 11 years, that would be 11,000 years per acre using this calculation. Next, we look at years per acre times the average years per row times the kernels per row. Remember, I said earlier that the Illinois corn, we had 18 rows. Well, here we're going to go back and our, our example calculation, we have 11,000 years. Remember, we calculated it just a bit earlier. We count the number of rows. Normally, this would be like uh, 12, 14, 16, even 18 uh, of two. But remember, we're going to average. We're going to do some averaging here at this point. And we counted up to 22.4 kernels per row. So in that last U of I corn we showed to you, we guesstimated about two kernels per row, and we had 16 rows. So you can see not a, bar, not, not, not a, not a real buster of a corn yield there. So we end up with this calculation being about three and a half million kernels per acre. Boy, that sounds really pretty good. But remember now, we must come to this PowerPoint, and that is bushels per acre in terms of kernels per acre. And you can see the guideline numbers here, 110,000 for small kernels. And for, for us, uh, many farms, that will be true, depending how much moisture there is to fill those poll pollinated ears. 90,000 for medium kernels. And that's probably what we saw from the U of I there, kind of a medium kernel, at least in mine. And of course, uh, if you really got a great field, and there are, by the way, some great fields in the Midwest, not too many of them, though, you divide by 70,000. So here's 
Here's your example, that 3.5 million kernels per acre. It's draw stress corn I'm divided by 110. That means I got about 31 bushels per acre. That becomes a very important number, not only to you as a dairy farmer, but also to a corn grower to determine, am I going to take the combine out and run through this? Also will be useful for you corn growers to determine if, in fact, what kind of a, a payment you might get with insurance on your corn crop. Okay, now let's look also at estimating a corn size yield with little or no grain in the product. So certainly a lot of thumb rules out there. Here's one. One ton, 30% dry matter silage can be obtained for each foot of plant height, excluding the tassel. And you can see Jim Bolt standing here in the field. Uh, that field is going to fit right into that category. And there is a fair amount of that was planted mid or a little bit later in the, in the spring, really get, got caught or hammered as far as that goes. So your example, corn is four feet tall. Looks like Jim is about where this close to what Jim has standing next to him there. Chopping at, uh, at and, and then chopped at one foot, 30% dry matter means we got about three tons per acre. Now, obviously, that field that I should, that corn crop came from at Illinois, that corn was eight foot tall and had those ears in it. So obviously, that is going to be a little bit more tonnage than, say, this thumb rule here. So it's, it's, it's very difficult. Our, our guideline is uh, chop the feed, weigh it, get some ideas of how many loads are coming off for so many acres. And to us, that's going to be the best answer. And then have some type of a dry matter a test run on it. And to me, that's the safest, safest both for the seller and buyer in terms of estimating corn silage yield. Then let's take a quick look as we wind up here looking at whole plant corn silage yields just to give us a little bit of a barometer here. Here is a, another way to calculate. It's much easier. You take a representative sample area in the field, determine inches between roll as we did before. Then you go ahead and cut depending on the length you have. So if you've got 36 inch rows, you're going to harvest seven feet and three inches. And that's going to be equal to one two thousandth of an acre. Once you've chopped that uh, uh, seven foot, eight foot, nine foot, whatever that length is, you will weigh that corn. Then uh, we will then uh, con convert that, that corn into tons, uh, tons per acre using that 2,000 constant. And repeat that for five or seven different spots in the field, and you'll get an estimated field average. Probably pretty close to what the insurance adjusters are going to be doing out there. That's why they want you to leave test strips, in fact, if you're going to be plowing down or disking down or whatever you're going to be allowed to do with that residue that's on that field. This is a PowerPoint that comes from Maryland that simply shows kind of what that may look like. And we put this in because there's tremendous variation in what the nutrient content is going to be. Up there is normal corn silage, pretty much. Uh, actually, our, in Illinois, in a normal year, our, our ADF would be more like 24, 23. The TDN would be 71, 72, or 0 0.71, 0 0.72 mcals. Here's your drought stress. You can see with very few ears, uh, quickly, uh, uh, the TDN drops down at this point. Uh, protein is up. That's primarily nitrates at this point. ADF is up as, on that as well. This is, and by the way, we just saw samples come in here at the University of Illinois, and that's exactly from the field, and exactly what we saw, ADF around 37, 38, NDF at 55. So very quickly, this becomes a grass forage that has a lot of NDF or fill factor at this point. No ears. You can see again, uh, down we go. The protein is higher because of nitrates. Some of those nitrates are stored as protein in ears. So if you get some pollination, that helps you a little bit on the nitrate concern. But now you can see, obviously, the fiber goes up and the TDN comes down. And this is very average, very average, probably 110, 111, 115 relative feed quality index feed. So let's take a look at our take-home messages. First, remember, these are only estimates and are greatly affected in how we, how we take the, the sample and samples are taken in the field areas we take. We can really bias our answers. And it's going to be tough because these fields are all over the map, depending on soil types, topography, and when rains came through. And then be aware, even though we've got yield estimates, the value of those nutrients are going to be quite variable depending on such things as height, uh, four feet versus eight feet, stage of maturity, uh, when the plant really stopped growing. Did it pollinate? And if it did pollinate, what percent of the kernels actually did fill? So if you found this information useful, come and visit us. We have several dairy courses, two of them coming the fall. 2012 on reproduction and dairy management. You can also find additional uh, dairy information coming to our, our website called DairyNet. And again, the URL is listed there as well. Well, that completes our uh, YouTube presentation for today. Thanks. Have a great day.